Welcome to the Quit Vaping Podcast, the podcast designed to make you a non-listener. In this show, I'm not going to scare you away from a life of vaping. What I am going to do is show you just how good your life can be without it. Thank you so much for listening and enjoy the show. All right, welcome to episode 65 of the podcast. So I tweaked my back yesterday. I don't know if you guys have this issue, but I work from home. I have this crappy computer chair I'm staring at right now. It's sitting in the middle of my room. Like I'm going to go bust its head with a pipe. (laughs) I got that Italian mobster in me this morning because I sat in this damn chair for like 45 hours this week. I'm doing a lot of work behind the scenes in my business and I felt my back getting tight. And this is always a sign that I ignore. You know what I mean? And I know what's going to happen. I know what's coming. So I ignored it. I ignored it. I ignored it until it got to the point where like I couldn't ignore it anymore. I'm like, oh, now now's the appropriate time to do yoga, right? So I decided to do yoga and I sat down and did yoga. And then when I stood up, I tweaked it just the tiniest bit. You know, if you've ever tweaked your back, it's like the tiniest micro movement that gets you. So that's what happened. And of course, yesterday I set up a date. So um, if you guys have been listening for a while, you'll know that I have not dated somebody since March. So I was dating this guy. He was a feng shui consultant. It was great. I got exactly what I needed out of that relationship. I really enjoyed it and it was perfect for that season of my life. And anyways, I moved back home with my parents about a month ago now. And I'm like, you know, I want to go on a date tonight. So I got on the old Tinder. I, I'm like, my intention was I'm going to find someone that is like decent looking and I just want to go and have a nice dinner with someone, right? So I did that and I signed up for, I signed up. <laughs> I signed up, I don't know how else to say it, for a date. So we went out last night and my back was tweaked. So this guy literally met me like with a six inch lean because I couldn't even stand up straight. But I'm like, I'm not canceling, you know, I don't cancel unless it's a really good reason. I I honor the commitments I make. So we went out, we had a really nice time. And long story short, uh, we started talking about like math. He's an actuary, which if you don't know what an actuary is, um, it's like someone who estimates insurance stuff. And that itself to me is pretty dry, but I can get behind like the math and the numbers. But we started talking about like, you know, what else do you like about your job? And he loves numbers. And he's like, I always wanted to go and get a doctorate in math. I just didn't know what I was going to do with it. And I'm like, that's so interesting because it seems like the people that get more and more understanding of math simultaneously become more spiritual. I'm like, this is a conversation we can have. So we went out, we had a drink last night at this really fancy bar and just sipped on a cocktail for a couple hours and just had a wonderful conversation about math and God and the universe and how like there's this principle in spirituality. And also now I understand there's also a similar principle in math where it's like as above, so below. So you can actually look at how something functions on one area and make the logic jump that it would also have to function in a different area. And when it comes to spirituality, Um, things that work on the physical or the mental plane, they make the jump that as above, so below. So if it works on the lower planes, it also works that way on the spiritual planes. And that's how a lot of very intelligent people who are much smarter than me understand how God works from a logical perspective. Very interesting stuff. If you're ever interested in it, um, I recommend you read the book, The Kabbalion. It's written by the three initiates, very enlightening book. And it actually does go along with any religious teaching that I've ever seen, just on a little bit of a, in my opinion, deeper spiritual principle kind of perspective that deals with laws of the universe. So long story short, I went on a date last night and not only did I talk about life coaching and math (laughs) and spirituality, but it went really well. So I'm like, I probably got to hold on to this guy, at least go on one more date with him. Um, Also, I want to tell you before I get going with today's episode, I I lived in Spain in 2019. You guys know this now, if you've listened for a while, it was a great time during my life. At some point I want to go back and just like to be able to travel and just go do that for a little while. Like that's my plans. But um, I lived with this girl named Maria and she was Dutch and I love Dutch girls. They are literally, I've tell you right now, I don't know if you know anybody who's Dutch um, from the Netherlands, but her and my friend Mar, they, I met them both in Spain. They were both the most confident girls I've ever met my whole life. Like they were just unapologetically themselves. And I always admired them for that. But, um, I got on Google, you know how like, sometimes it tells you like the recipe of the day or like the, the famous person on Google today. It said, um, like, here's the list of fall recipes. And I clicked on it and squash soup came up and I'm like, Oh, that sounds so good. And it brought me right back to Spain in 2019. My Dutch roommate, Maria, her mom came to visit from the Netherlands. And this woman brings this like gallon size bag. And if you need like I don't know how to transfer that into not United States measurements. <laughs> so figure out the metric for that. But it was a ridiculously sized bag of this like brown powder. And me and my South Korean roommate, Leo, we we're like trying to figure out what it was for like a week. I'm like, what is it? Cinnamon? Is it spice? And I think I remember he ended up putting it in something he made. And he's like, blah, blah, what even is that? And we talked to Maria the next day, I'm like, girl, what is in this bag you brought back? Because it was just on the counter. And she's like, use it. And I didn't know what it was. And 
I guess it was um it was soup broth. It was like uh, bouillon, beef broth bouillon in a powder. And I just think it was so funny. But she used to make squash soup. And that Dutch girl ate so much squash soup that she went through like three quarters of that bag in a couple months. I've never seen somebody use more beef stock in my life. <laughs> but that's what it reminded me of. So I have to text her today and be like, girl, it's squash soup season. <laughs> and she, I'm telling you, you guys, Dutch girls make the best soups. Oh my gosh. All right, so let's get back to the episode topic. Sorry about the long intro, but I hope you enjoyed it. So today's topic is talking about perfectionism and how it actually makes addiction worse. And I, this was sparked last night. I was talking to this guy on the date and we were talking about how we both actually grew up overweight and how neither of us would actually go on dates at all. We wouldn't even go on dates because of the way that we talk to ourselves about the entire process. And I think this is really important and it goes right to the perfectionism thing. It's like so many of us have been taught that we need to literally be externally perfect or perfect in everything we do. And that the right way to get us there to make us feel perfect is to shame ourselves. And I just think it's interesting. I was talking to that guy last night and I'm like, the reason I can just impromptu go on a date today is because I no longer allow myself to talk to myself like shit, no matter how the date goes. So it frees me to go and just be myself because I'm not going to beat myself up if it goes well or if it goes bad. And it's kind of interesting because like I used to just have a poor relationship with myself. I'm not saying that it's perfect today by any means, but it's so much better than it used to be. And like, even if the date went well, I would still go home and I would beat myself up and think of ways it could have gone better. That's, that's like bananas, right? All right. So I used to try to be a perfectionist with dates and that actually just stopped me from going on them altogether. I'm telling you guys, like I had a period of my life in my early twenties where I didn't even go on a date for like three years because I was so shameful about myself. And I thought that I literally, I was waiting till like I weighed a certain amount. I had a certain amount of income in my bank account. Like I'm still, I still have these patterns, by the way, they're not nearly as strong and I'm working on them, but like Literally, I'm like, I live at, I live at home with my parents. I can't go on a date. And I just dropped that shit yesterday. I'm like, no, I'm not like, I'm not allowing myself to beat myself up for where I'm at. So step up and enjoy my freaking life. And I did it and I had a wonderful time. Okay. So we're talking about perfectionism today and oh my God, everyone talks about perfectionism. I don't, I don't know. I just, I like to keep things very simple. I think perfectionism is something we do as a defense mechanism for having a poor relationship with ourselves. I really believe that that's true. Perfectionism in its core is just trying to be so perfect that you don't have to experience failure. And honestly, truly, the reason why somebody is is scared to experience failure is because of the way that they're going to talk to themselves and what they're going to make that mean about themselves if they fail. I really want you to sit with that for a minute. The entire episode could have just been summed up with that sentence. The reason you're being a perfectionist is because you don't want to fail. And the reason you don't want to fail is because what you're going to make it mean about yourself if you do. One of the reasons why I'm shifting my view on black and white thinking of any kind and becoming less polarized as I get older is because I don't think polarized thinking is ever very loving to yourself. I don't think it's loving to yourself to say, I can never touch nicotine again. I don't think it's loving to yourself to say, I should never touch sugar again, or I can't literally will not allow myself to go on a date and have a nice time until I have X amount of dollars in my bank account or X amount of, you know, results to prove that I'm worthy. (laughs) So just be mindful that failure is a completely normal part of growth. That's how you grow. By the way, you actually can't grow if you don't fail. I want you to think about this. Like if you tried to quit vaping and the very first time you succeeded, then you didn't have anything you needed to learn. (laughs) Like if I tried to go out into my life, right? Let's say I go out and I try to set a goal for myself and I just did this, right? I set a financial goal for my business and I hit it immediately without even trying on the first try. Then truly I didn't set a big enough goal. And that means that I've already done the thing I've set the goal for. So it's like you set goals for yourself that you haven't achieved because you haven't achieved them yet. And in not having achieved them yet, you have to expect that there's something you need to learn and failure is the learning process. So whatever you need to learn from failure will be illuminated for you. If you stop beating yourself up for failing so many of us, we've been taught that failure is bad. And like, listen, I grew up in the same school system that y'all grew up in. Okay. A plus is good. F is bad. It's like F isn't bad. F means there's something I need to learn. (laughs) But when I see F is bad, what happens is I bring shame and guilt into a perfectly beautifully whole normal situation. And when I make a judgment that something is wrong, I block myself off of learning. That's it. 
it's so ironic. You know, there's is the more that I do psychology work and all this work in the life, and the more that I get like more spiritually minded and open minded to things like this, the more that I realize everything's like a divine paradox. It really is. Perfectionism is designed to make you perfect, but it makes you never even step into discomfort and failure, so you can't get better. So perfectionism literally keeps you as far away from perfect as possible. It's kind of interesting, right? And then what do we do? Shame. We think that shame is like going to protect us, right? We're like, if I beat myself up, I won't vape all day long. But what ends up happening is because I don't want to be around myself when I'm beating myself up, I end up vaping more. It just happens that way. So just notice like perfectionism isn't loving to you. And I really mean this, you guys. I, I really mean this for you, okay? And also, I want to I want to make the side note. This podcast is for anyone. My tools will work for anyone and I stand on that. But in business, you have to market to a certain amount of people that like to make marketing, right? That's how marketing works. You, you market to a target market. So I've recently decided I'm marketing to moms. And the reason, it, there, I have a lot of reasons for that. So let me just tell you really fast. Number one is because if I can help moms, I get to help their kids, okay? I've been trying to bring this work to younger people for the last three years. And a lot of younger people just aren't, they're not having it. So no offense to young people. I've had some people that have, but in general, I think that moms are the target that I can hit that will help them. And they will also help their kids. In addition, I am a 50 year old woman at heart. So that's just like my people, you know what I mean? Like I just, I, I totally understand the 38 to 55 year old woman like that. We're just the same person. <laughs> so we just vibe. You want to work with people that you really like, right? Um, in addition, I can help moms not overeat. That's something I've struggled with. And I think that a lot of moms resonate with that. In addition, I can help moms like learn how to love themselves deeper. And I think that it's really good work to do with moms. And I think like, I just don't really vibe with dads that much or straight guys. So it just makes sense. So recently I've decided to work with moms. That is my target market. If you are a mama who's vaping and you want help and you want to not just like quit vaping, but also learn how to to do this work and improve the relationship with yourself so that you're not going to fear going back, come see me. Anyways, what I was saying is this work isn't about quitting vaping. It really isn't. It's about becoming the person that you want to be around so you don't need to escape yourself. And if you're beating yourself up before, during, and after the date, Like you're going to want to escape yourself. You're going to want to escape yourself so bad. You're not even going to allow yourself to go on dates for three years because you're terrified to actually experience how you're going to treat yourself on the other end of that experience. Now, the same thing's happening with quitting vaping, right? I have perfectionism moms who are constantly waiting, anybody really, but I know moms are specifically bad with perfectionism because here's the mentality, right, mama? It's like, oh, I can't fail. I cannot show weakness. I'm holding up my life for myself, my family, my work. Like a lot of my moms are working, right? Like my my boss and my work. Like I do all this so I can't fail. And that's not a good mentality to have because if you can't fail, you're never going to try. So although perfectionism seems, it seems really loving to us, right? It's like seems innocent and like, oh no, I, I just had to be perfect. That's fine. Like that's a good thing. I want, I want to strive for greatness. It takes you fully away from greatness. And it has you show up for yourself in a way that's just not loving. And also, when you don't show up for yourself in a way that's loving, I promise you, you can only extend what you have inside to other people. It has to work that way. The more that I've done this work and like allowed myself to not just think nasty thoughts about myself all the time and to not beat myself up, the more compassionate I show to myself, the the better person I've become because I can hold space for other people now. I used to be so mean to myself and then I would be so nasty and like not outwardly, right? I've always been a a kind person, but I would have nasty thoughts and beliefs about other people because that's how I was treating myself. And the more that I've been able to step into this work, truly the kinder I become for others and the more space I can hold for them along their journey and show them that they don't need to be nasty and perfect in order to go out and, and experience life. Like go out, go fail, go try quit vaping for a day and see what happens. And and it's not even about quitting vaping. It's about the story that you're going to tell yourself about what happened when you quit. It's about what you're going to make it mean when you quit. And maybe you pick up another vape a couple hours later, because I promise you, I promise you, if you can get to the place where you set a goal for yourself and you don't hit that goal and you don't make it mean a problem and you, you ask yourself like, you know, you're so love, you're amazing and you're worthy and you're whole either way. And I love you so much. And you look at yourself in the mirror and you say that and you hold space for a minute and then you go, okay, but what went wrong that I can learn from? That's how you grow. Okay. Holding up the entire world for yourself and other people and not allowing yourself to fail or even try and beating yourself up the whole way is how you crumble. 
it's just so interesting to me. Again, it's like a, it's a paradox. It's like, no, 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 I have to be strong. I can't feel my emotions. I can't be here with myself. I can't explore these things. So if I, if I explore these things, I'm going to fall apart. And then everyone that relies on me is also going to have to fall apart. It's like, well, you're already falling apart, right? You're vaping just to manage yourself. That to me is not, that's not coping very well. And I'm not saying that with any shame or guilt. Just look at vaping as a coping mechanism, right? Look at any substance as a coping mechanism, okay? So we're using that substance to cope. Cope with what? With all the weight we're putting on ourselves for having to be perfect. And when I stop having to be perfect, I actually become the best version of myself. It's just such a paradox. So the very real example I have from that, not only in vaping, but it's, again, it's my dating life, right? It's like, oh, I, I have to have this body. Andrew, you have to have this body before you can go out and people will love you. So what's happening in the moment that I'm like beating myself up, I'm not experiencing love. What do we all want? We all want to experience love. <laughs> so give it to yourself right now. And I had such a fun time last night. I wasn't in my head worried about what to say next. I wasn't like, oh God, did he see like my tiny little love handle? Cause it like, I wore a tight shirt and like, I have a love handle and well, what should I order? Cause he's going to judge me and we shouldn't get a cinnamon roll after at the bakery that I love because he's going to think I'm a nasty, disgusting pig. And I can't talk about what I want to talk about because he's going to judge me. Did none of that shit last night. I'm like, let's go out. Let's have a good time. I'm not even in my head. I just genuinely want to get to know you and talk about math <laughs> and religion. And we did that. And I had a blast. And you know what? Honestly, truly, even if I don't go on another date with him again, or he doesn't with me or whatever the, the thing is, like, I'm not going to take it personally. And that's going to allow me that compassion for myself to go, I'm awesome either way. And if even if he didn't like me, that's okay. It doesn't really have anything to do with me. Just wasn't a good fit. You know, mismatched puzzle pieces. That's all. Because of that story's in my head, I'm just going to allow myself, again, to just set up a date and go on it and have a good time, okay? But the perfectionism, Andrew, still exists in me. I want you to know that. Like, he's still here. That that mofo woke up yesterday morning. I'm like, the first thought that went through my head when I opened up Tinder was like, nope, you, you're still living at home with mom and dad. Like, you're actually not a place where you're established enough to go on a date and have a good time. You haven't earned that, right? Like, that's the asshole in my head that's still there. And I just want you to know, it's okay that that part of me is still there. I just choose not to listen to it anymore. And and I think that making space for that part of me to be there is the most compassionate thing that I can do for myself. It's like, of course, asshole Andrew's there. He's trying to protect me, right? He's just there. He's not doing a very good job at protecting me. He never has been. He used to tell me a story. He was really good at it, right? But of course, he's still there. So it's like, how can I allow asshole Andrew to be a part of my life and at the same time have compassion to Andrew that really knows what I deeply want and let myself have both of those without making it a problem that both of those parts of me exist? And if we're talking about perfectionism, like that's, that's the anti-perfectionism, right? It's like letting yourself not be perfect <laughs> and holding space for both parts of you. That's the work. And you will come to see, truly, you will come to see that this work has everything to do with vaping and nothing to do with vaping at the same time. Do you think that I wake up in the morning and I'm like, my first thoughts like, damn, those nicotine companies and they're getting those kids hooked and we've got to stop. They're the ultimate evil, evil. That is not my narrative. <laughs> the real story in my head is that this work is so important and the vaping lens is the best lens I've got right now to provide this work to as many people as possible. So although I do believe that those nicotine companies are totally horrible people for trying to addict kids to nicotine so that they can make money, like I just am not going to spend my sacred work hours trying to make other people's lives and get them addicted to things. I don't believe in vice marketing for myself, so I wouldn't do it, and I don't think it's right. That's not what I'm spending all my time worrying about. What I'm spending my time focusing on is how can I use this platform of vaping to show you guys and teach you guys the work of your life, to step into compassion for yourself so that you can create not only that relationship with yourself and truly create whatever result you want because you have a relationship with yourself that warrants that, but also so that you can teach this to other people as well. And so far, I think that this has been the blessed platform I've got. So hopefully this helped you guys. I'm just totally into this today. I love it. I love the place in my life I'm at and everything's going really good. And also things aren't where they could be. And that's okay too, right? Again, hold space for that. Like if you're vaping right now, acknowledge it's okay. It's okay that I'm vaping. And also I think that my life will be better on the other side of this, but I don't need to make myself rush to a result to feel better. It's like even right now, right? I'm single right now and that's okay. I'm living at home with my mom and dad and that's okay. And I know that I want more, right? Like I want to go travel. I want to make an, enough money to support myself and eventually a, completely a family and to go and take my parents to Italy. Like I want all of those things and I can want those things for the future and be so excited about them and simultaneously be here and be grateful 
and also at the same time know that I want more, right? And that's what it looks like to have this relationship with yourself where you're actually going to create the life that you want, okay? And when you have this relationship with yourself, I'm telling you guys, like I still use substances sometimes, right? Like I've got a cup of coffee right here, right next to me, all good, but it doesn't have the grip on me it used to because without the coffee, I like the relationship that I'm left with. And that's pretty powerful, huh? So anyways, if you're a mama and you've been working on doing this for a long time, you've been listening to a lot of these episodes, uh, I have a course. It's amazing. It's a DIY course. It will work for you, but you have to show up for yourself there. And I also have a coaching package that's specifically for you. And this coaching package is four months long. And it's also in addition to guaranteeing the result of quitting vaping, if you work with me on the one-on-one package, can't guarantee that on the DIY I've tried, doesn't work, right? You guys have to show up for yourself. That will work for you, but you got to show up. So the coaching package, if you work with me one-on-one, I'm guaranteeing you the result, which I think is pretty crazy, but I, I believe that I can guarantee it with any client I have because this shit works and you'll see that it's about vaping and it's not about vaping. <laughs> All right. In addition to that, I'm going to help you with the emotional eating tools so you don't gain weight. I'm also going to teach you how to step into the motherhood that you want to so you can show up fully believing that you're the badass and amazing mom that you are so you can also teach your kids these tools. My parents taught me how to become addicted to nicotine. My mom also accidentally taught me how to hate myself. Not only if I had to undo that work for myself and it's taken me about 10 years to do it and I'm still halfway through, I would say, but also now I'm teaching my parents this. And although I love my parents so much and I don't mind teaching them this because I'm just like all about this all the time, I go on dates and talk about this shit. <laughs> like, I don't think that most kids are going to be in the position that I'm in. So set them up for success. Do not teach them how to hate themselves, how to shame themselves, how they need to be perfect. And I promise you, no matter what you think is going on right now and what, what lessons you teach your kids that you think that they're receiving the ones that they're actually receiving are the ones that you are teaching to yourself okay because kids learn by watching they don't they don't learn by speaking right i by the time i was probably two years old i was already a nicotine addict in my mind and nothing was going to change that until my parents taught me differently or until i did this work for myself which my parents still haven't done most of this work my mom kind of has i love her so much my dad probably isn't gonna do this work so i say that to say not to threaten or to say that you're bad parents but to say I don't believe it's your fault for getting to this place wherever you are in life, but it's your responsibility to correct for it, okay? Especially as a parent. And I do want to adopt kids one day, and I will teach them this shit. And I'm going to do it with compassion. (laughs) And know that I'm going to make mistakes as a parent, and a lot of them. And I'll hold compassion for myself either way, because that's the lesson I want my kids to learn. Not that you should never make a mistake. That's a horrible lesson to teach somebody. That when you do, you can own it with compassion and also learning what you did wrong so you can fix for it, okay? Thanks for listening to today's episode. I just want to take a second to invite you to check out my resources in the bio. I have two options to help you if you've been listening to this podcast for a while and you find that the information is amazing and life-changing, but you're having trouble implementing it in your own life and actually getting results, then I want to invite you to join my DIY Escape the Vape course that will help you walk through how to actually apply this information in your life on your own time or I want to invite you to join my one-on-one coaching program. That's a four-month program that guarantees you the result. I take three clients a month. You can check out any more information on both of those options in the link in the bio. I really hope to see you there. Thank you so much for listening. I'll talk to you next week.